population refers to your population being symmetric with no skewness or kurtosis. When it's symmetric like this, it means that your mean, median, and mode are in the middle of your distribution, and your standard deviations um, allow for 68% of the information or the data points to fall within plus or minus one standard deviation, 95% of your data to fall in between plus or minus two standard deviations. And lastly, 99.7% of your data fall in between plus or minus three standard deviations. With normality, there are a lot of things that you can do to check it, but uh, one of the main things are skewness and kurtosis. Kurtosis referring to how flat or steep the distribution is, and skewness referring to if the distribution leans any which way. So with kurtosis, because that's how flat or steep the curve is, um, that you can either be your distribution can either be leptokurtotic, which means that too many of the data points are in the middle of the distribution. So with this graphic with the kangaroo, it shows that too many of the data points are in the middle, centered around the mean, but there aren't enough data points that are spread out ac across the entire distribution. At the same time, your distribution can be platykurtotic, which means that it's too fat, or there's not a normal distribution because all of your data points are spread out too much across the entire distribution. There's the clever wordplay, Plato. That's a platypus, by the way. Oh, platypus. <laughs> Platypuses are poisonous, so a platykurtotic distribution is poisonous. It will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this is basically what they would look like. So we could use the normal distribution curve to show no skew, but then the skewness did, uh, denotes whether the mean of your graph is too far to the left or too far to the right. So if you have a positive skew, that means that the tail of the distribution skews off to the right side of the graph so that your mean of your distribution is too far over to the left in the negative and then it's converse with a negative skew. The tail of the distribution um, ranges too far over to the left, like rather in, into the negative numbers, so the median or mean is really too far to the right. So when your distribution is normal, um, you may have a few outliers or not, you'll want to check for that, but generally the assumption of normality is reasonably robust, meaning that you can have a few violations, such as a few outliers, and your distribution won't be too messed up by that. If you find that <clears throat> the mean is not in the middle, then you, there's a lot of things that you can do, like transformations. You can do take the natural log or the log or the square root of all the numbers or square all the numbers. But generally, that's not really needed because normality is a reasonably robust assumption. is something that's very, very important, but that's intrinsic to your study design. And that refers to you want all of the different observations or different data points in your distribution to be independent of each other. An example of that is, say, for example, if I were taking a survey of how people felt about a movie, and I asked... Subject A. ...how you liked that movie, and you said that you hated it, and then you went and told... Subject B. ...that the movie was really terrible and she goes in to watch the movie with a different opinion, you would be affecting her opinion. So this really, this is an assumption that's not robust at all. You have to uphold this. <laughs> if you violated independence of observation, that really just means that you have a very bad study design and you need to retake your sample or whatnot. Homogeneity of variance is the assumption that our samples all have the same variance. So if you have a residual plot, and remember residuals refer to the error, um, in this plot the middle line is the mean, and each of the data points refers to how far each of the data points strays from that mean, that being the residual. So if you look at that very first data point, it could be if your mean was 50, that data point could say that it's 5 points away from 50. So when we look at our residual plot, we basically want there to be no recognizable shape. 
to show that our variance is not systematic, our error is not systematic. It's uniform and all throughout we don't see any kinds of trends. The error is symmetrical. In this plot, we have heterogeneity of variance, meaning that we can find some sort of systematic trend in our error. If you look at the right side as a plot, this again being a residual plot, the error over there is much more varied than it is on the left side of the plot, showing that perhaps something systematic is happening to our variance. It's not symmetrical here. So as the value of your independent variable increases here, so also does the range of the dependent variable variance. If you can see any kind of shape with your residual, such as a triangle or a curve or any other kind of recognizable trend, then you have a problem. Generally, if you violate homogeneity variance, it increases your chances of making a type 1 error because this usually comes from violations of normality of your distribution. There are ways that you can check your homogeneity variance in SPSS, or now called PASW. You can check the Levine's test, which is a test um, that subtracts the mean from each data point and then does an ANOVA on the resulting numbers. In SPSS, if you find that your Levine's test has a significant number, less than 0.05 or 0.01 or whatever your cutoff is, then you significantly violated homogeneity of variance. The Brown-Forsyth test is very similar to Levine's test. It also tests for homogeneity variance, but here you're subtracting the median from each data point instead of the mean as in the Levine's test. And the reason why we do that is because, remember, the mean is more susceptible to outliers than the median is. Again, if you violate the Brown-Forsyth test, then you violate homogeneity of variance. The last type of variance test that you can use is the Fmax test, which is where you simply take your largest variance divided by your smallest variance, um, and you get a ratio. If that ratio is greater than 9, then it's generally significant, and you violated homogeneity of variance. When you have a within-subjects design or repeated measures design, then you have an additional assumption called sphericity. Because in repeated measures, the error term is the person themselves. You're repeating, you're comparing a person to themselves. So in the assumption of sphericity, if one person moves, think of it as a school of fish, everyone else needs to move in the same way. So if person A responds to treatment 2 very badly, then you would expect everybody else to respond to treatment 2 badly as well. If you have an entire group of people and only one person is reacting very differently from everybody else, that may be a type of error that is related to something else about your designer to that person themselves and not to your actual independent variable that you're manipulating.